Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today um, I'm covering some currency questions. So this has been another one of the uh, more requested videos on my channel um, alongside like time zones and speed distance time. And um, so yeah, I thought I'd finally go over currency. So a couple of things to first of all um, check about. So all currency is, it's just a mod bunch of multiplications and divisions. That's all it is, okay? It's just another form of like ratios and proportions. And importantly, it's therefore just about getting into this kind of like robotic mode. So one of the things that I say with QR is that a lot of the questions follow a very, very similar kind of pattern of with the way that they do things, right? One of the things I will tell any one of my students is that they only ever ask you to add, multiply, divide and subtract, right? They never ask you to integrate. They never ask you to differentiate. They never ask you to find vectors. Like, you know, it's nothing crazy, essentially. It's always the same things that they ask you to do over and over again. OK, so for that reason, it's really, really important that we kind of almost get to this robotic phase where we just get used to doing questions over and over again. And therefore, it becomes second nature. and You don't really have to think about, oh, am I dividing it properly? Am I going the right way? And the only way to get there is to just do as much practice as possible. So one of the things I'd recommend is, so for example, if you guys are practicing using Medify or Medentry, I think for QR, for example, you should, aim, you should be aiming to complete at least 75% of the questions that's available because the things repeat so often, okay? And so you just get used to seeing them over and over and over again that it, you don't even have to think about it. You just do it, basically, okay? That's one thing that's so, so important. So the second thing I'd say is, and this is just another thing you can use to double check, which is stronger currencies require less um, amount. So what that basically means is if a, if a currency is strong, so this is one of the terms that maybe some of you guys may be familiar with, maybe you might not be as familiar. A currency being strong means that you need less of that currency compared to other weaker currencies to equate each other. Okay. So for example, um, you, so the pound is quite a fairly strong currency. Okay. I mean, it's fallen a bit in recent times, but we won't get into politics now. Um, but one of the, let's say weaker currencies therefore would require more um, would require more of that currency to equal one pound, okay? Because the pound is stronger. Um, so for example, a dollar, um, so you require more dollars than you do. So for example, if I um, find out what the exact, so on this day that I'm filming this video, the, the translation is that for one dollar, uh, oh, for one dollar, you only need 0 0.74 pounds. OK, so you can see here you need less pounds to equate the same amount of dollars. So, for example, the stronger currency you need less of. That's the idea. OK, so you can double check this with your answer. So, for example, if you're multiplying and dividing the wrong way, you've got to ask yourself, OK, so I'm going from pounds to dollars. The pounds are stronger um, and I know it's stronger because there's less of it. So therefore, if I'm going from pounds to dollars, I'm going to have more dollars for the same amount of pounds because dollars is weaker. So I need more of it to make up for it. OK, so that's just one thing you can do to double check. And the other thing is practice, 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 of course. So um, you're probably tired of seeing these three words by now because I pretty much include it in every single one of my videos, but it really, really is important. So currency questions used to be by all time, like least favorite questions to do, but I kind of just realized I'd have to suck it up and do it. So I kind of got onto doing it essentially. So it's really, really important that you just learn to skip, right? It's really, really important that you just learn to do questions um, in just a certain way. Um, and so, yeah, so... And by that, uh, essentially, um, by doing enough practice, you come to realise, oh, actually, you know what? These questions aren't too bad. OK, and then you, uh, hopefully you'll get good at them. But at the end of the day, you know, if you are still really struggling with it, remember the idea of QR and the UK in general, it's not about getting 100 percent. It's about trying to do as many of the easy questions as we can possibly. So if currency causes us a problem, fine, that's OK. You know, obviously try to get good at it. Don't just give up on it. But if you're still struggling with it, you know, prioritise other questions and maybe come back to these questions at the end. OK. So let's have a look at this. So which of the listed currencies is the most valuable? So the most valuable is a synonym for the strongest one. And what did I say about the strongest one? You need, um, for the strongest one, you need more of a current, so you need less of that currency. Okay, so for example, for if you're converting pounds to dollars, whichever one is stronger, you need less of that. Okay, so this is a bit of a weird table because it says rate of exchange of one unit of foreign currency equivalent to rupees. So it's basically saying one unit of this currency, how many rupees will it give you? So remember what I said, you, if, if a currency is strong, you're going to get more um, from the other side, if that makes sense. So if you go back to that example of the pounds and the dollars, okay, pounds versus dollars. If pounds are stronger, you're going to get more dollars um, than you will pounds. So it's the same idea here. So which, whichever one is strongest, you're going to get more 
um, rupees out of it. So it says one unit of the foreign currency exchange equivalent to Indian rupees. So here you can see one Australian dollar only gives you 52.7 Indian rupees. But then one euro will give you 69.8 Indian rupees. But then the pound sterling, you can see, is the highest amount. So therefore, it's going to be the most valuable here. It's going to be 80.35. Okay, so the answer is just pound sterling. Quite a nice one to start off with. Okay. How many Swiss francs could you buy for £150? Okay, so you look at Swiss francs. And so this is the GBP per unit. And this is the units per GBP. So GBP is Great British Pounds, of course. Um, so we want how many of the Swiss francs could you buy for £150? So we want how many units do you get per pound? So this is simply 1.8087 times 150 so if I put that into my calculator, 150 times 1.8087, which gives me 271.305 Swiss francs. Okay, so not too difficult of a question, I don't think. It's just a straightforward conversion. And once again, you can ask yourself this. So, um, like I said, the pound is quite a strong um, currency. It's probably one of the strongest. So therefore, Swiss francs is probably going to be less strong. So therefore, you're going to need more Swiss francs to equal the same amount of money. Do you see? So you know we've gone the right way. And also, if you think about what this is saying, this is saying this is how many Swiss francs you get per GBP, per pound. And this tells you how many pounds you get per Swiss franc. Okay? So, if you guys want to pause, see if you can have a go at this question now that we've done some of the intro questions, and then let me know what you get as an answer. Okay? So if I'm going to take R7750, uh, ZAR, which is um, the uh, RAND, I believe, and um, it says they end up spending 5950 of it. Uh, if all the remaining money is exchanged back, how much GBP do the family receive? Okay, so this is an interesting question. So they spend 5950, so it's just 7750 minus 5950, first of all. So 7750 minus 5950, which is 1800. 1800 ZAR. Okay, and if it, all of it is exchanged back, how much GBP do the family receive? So, okay, so remember, GBP per unit, units per GBP. So we're trying to figure out how much pounds do you get. And remember, this time we're using the other column because this tells you how many pounds you get per unit. Okay, so we have 0 0.06482 pounds per unit. So we have 1,800 of those units, so we just have to multiply by 0 0.06482 times 0 0.06482. Which is 116.676 pounds. So I guess if we were going to round it, it's going to be 117 pounds. That's how much the family, that's how much pounds the family receive after spending this amount. Okay? So um once again, it's just about working through it methodically, asking yourself the question, okay, do I go this way or that way? So here, you know that um, pounds is stronger. So for 1800 ZAR, you're definitely going to get way less pounds, like numerically. 1800 ZAR, you're not going to get more than 1800. It has to be less, and the only way to do that is to multiply it. Okay? Perfect. So, how much does it cost in GBP to buy 3000 EGP Egyptian pounds using cash? So... This is how many pounds it costs, how many pounds you get per unit. You want to buy 3,000 uh, EGP using cash. So once again, if you guys would like to take a pause and see what you get as the answer here. Okay. So it tells you per unit, this is how much GBP it costs. So if you're going to buy 3,000 of these, once again, you're just going to multiply by 0 0.1214. This was quite a nice question. 0.1214. And that gives you 364.2 pounds. So that's the answer. Fairly straightforward, I would say. Not too difficult. So last question here. So the credit card credit card holder credit card rate for Canadian dollars is 1.701 units per GBP. How much more or less Canadian dollars do you get with a credit card than to use cash to buy a hundred pounds worth of CAD? So if you use cash to buy £100 worth of CAD, that's easy now. So now we're kind of used to this. So this is the amount of units you get per GBP. So it's just going to be 100 times 1.8535. And you can do this fairly easily in your head. You just have to move the decimal point two places. So it becomes 185 
0.35 CAD, but the credit card holder rate is 1.8701. So therefore it's just 1.8701. Well, I guess I did it the wrong way. It should be 100 pound times 1.8701, which is 187.01 CAD. And then you can simply just subtract these two values from each other, um, which gives you 1.66 uh, CAD that you get. Um, so this is with the uh, credit card. So with the credit card, you get 1.66 more Canadian dollars. Obviously, there was a faster way to do this as well. So if you guys spotted this, very well done. So the faster way to do it was to simply just look at the difference in, so with Canadian dollars, so the difference here, so 1.8701 minus 1.8535, because that's the difference per, basically per British pound, and times that by 100. So that's 1.8701 minus 1.8535. So if I just put that into my calculator, 1.8535, and then multiply this by 100, and you get 1.66 CAD, exactly the same. Okay, um, so once again, not too challenging of a question, I don't think, but you can see a little shortcut here for you guys. I know a lot of people, um, that's another thing I want to address, a lot of people always come at me and they always say that, oh, you know, they always email me saying that, okay, like, do you have any additional shortcuts, anything additional to find? I promise you guys, if there is something that I find, I will put it out there or it will be up in an upcoming video. So some of the main ones I already have put out, um, but of course, you know, I wouldn't gatekeep for no reason. So um, yeah, no, I do appreciate all of the uh, the comments and the emails though. So please do keep them coming in. Um, and I promise you I'm doing my best to scour the internet and to be able to find the very best tips for you guys. Um, but no, I do appreciate all of the love and support as usual. And I hope this uh, made a little bit of sense. And so I will release, uh, potentially I'll do a follow-up on currency because it can be quite a weak area. Um, so I will do some follow-up videos, perhaps with some harder currency questions. But as always, um, please do use that document down in the description to put your questions. Like I said, it really helps me because then I don't have to go searching for questions, right? Often the difficult part when recording these videos is searching for questions itself. Um, and that can often take me way, way longer than the actual recording and editing. Okay, so I hope that will make sense. Um, so as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. And please do comment, um, like, share and subscribe with your friends. And um, yeah, thank you very much.